Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Nightshade by Grey Owl It seemed every night Alex woke to a scratching sound under her bed. She would always lean over the edge of the mattress, attempting to catch a glimpse of whatever it may have been clawing away at her wooden floors, but there was never anything there. Though her sister told her she was hallucinating, she began to suspect her own cats. They held a record for ruining her clothes and furniture, so they had already made a bad impression in Alex's eyes. Coincidentally, whenever she awoke from her slumber in the morning, both cats would be laying in her bed stretching as she opened her eyes. And with every passing day, she grew increasingly paranoid. She was positive that they knew she was on to them. She could see it in their cold, implacable eyes. Each would glance at the other any time she looked back at them as she prepared for work. They were plotting against her. So, she planned her counterattack. At first, her attempts were subtle. She would leave out lilies in the dining room table, knowing that they were toxic to cats in hopes that the infelicitous felines would devour them as they did everything else that was hers. They didn't even look at the lilies. They were too smart. She began growing tired of their constant mocking. They paraded around her room as if she was some kind of imbecile, incapable of outsmarting them. She couldn't let the cats get the upper hand, so after countless failed attempts at getting them to eat the lilies, she upgraded to leaving out what most cats found irresistible, tuna. Though to humans it is not toxic, when consumed in excess by a cat, they quickly succumb to mercury poisoning. Unfortunately, even the tuna went unnoticed by the cats. They just stared on it as Days passed without even the slightest bit of food filling their bellies. Something wasn't right about the cats. Why would they willingly starve when food was readily available to them? They either sensed her devious intent or they simply didn't have an appetite. Either way, they sure as hell didn't budge. So after trying everything she could do to get rid of the damned cats, she made a trip to the attic. The attic that housed her 22 long rifle. As she searched the attic for the rifle, she came across a box that she had long forgotten about. It was the box the two cats were in when she found them on her doorstep. Curious, she opened it, locking eyes with what was inside, and slowly, everything began to make sense. The markings on the box, written in what appeared to be a language that she'd not taken in years, suggested that the cats could not be destroyed. She skimmed through the dialogue, ignoring the grass at the bottom of the box before coming up with a sinister plan. Hastily, with her new courage, she walked down the attic stairs, toting a rifle in one arm and the box in the other. She called for the cats once she sat the box on the ground, waiting for them to approach, but neither so much as purred. Instinctively, she snuck into her room and found the two laying on her bed stretching as they always did. Oh, I'm so happy you two are in here together, she said, aiming her rifle at each of their heads. They both seemed to glare at her, hissing as she applied pressure to the trigger. Boom. One down. Boom, boom, boom. The other tried to run, but he wasn't quick enough. Eagerly, she approached the two now dead cats, a smile overwhelming her face. Though adrenaline surged through her body once she knelt before their small corpses, she noticed something odd. Not a speck of blood had exited their bodies. She looked to her bedroom walls, expecting to see blood splattered all over them, but there was nothing. What kind of cats don't bleed, she thought to herself. But she shrugged off the observation as a new one arose. An overwhelming stench permeated the air. Plugging her nose, she rushed toward the box, readying to throw them into it. But once she returned, she noticed something strange. The cats were crawling with maggots. 
The fresh bullet holes seeped out the disgusting pests as she slowly stepped closer. They began crawling on her sheets as she stood before the decaying cats. Kneeling, she could tell that they'd been dead for a while. Days even. Their bodies were cold and stiff, well into rigor mortis, but it was impossible for them to have been dead long enough to crawl with this many maggots. She had witnessed them stretch on her bed this morning. She saw them moving. They even scratched at her floors as she slept for days on in, but the putrid stench in the air derived from their decomposing bodies. There was no way they could have been alive minutes prior to her shooting them. No way in hell. So, she went into shock, falling to the maggot-infested bed as tears streamed down her cheeks. Attempting to wipe away the tears, she realized that she was still holding the box in her hands. Naturally, she glanced down at it, reading the writing now recognized as her sister's hand on the front of it read a gift to you alex slowly she began to remember the cats being an early birthday present looking back into the box with tear-filled eyes she noticed the bounties of dying flowers but one in particular caught her eye the single nightshade stem hidden amongst the grass Oh no, she repeated, dropping the box to the floor. The nightshade. She had mistakenly eaten one of its berries the day she had opened the box. She began to remember now. They died the day that she received them. She hurt them. She hurt them bad for scratching under the bed. The scariest part of it all, she thought they'd been alive all this time. It was the nightshade. Her sister was right. She was hallucinating. And that's why they say you're not paranoid if they're actually out to get you. On the other hand, if you can't tell what's actually going on, how the hell do you know? <laughs> Stay scary, my wildlings. Remember, if you don't know what it is, don't put it in your mouth. And make the most of your nights.